Arthur, Minister of Muhammad Temple Number 7, New York City. Speaking to you on behalf of that great teacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the black man and woman of America, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Messenger of Allah, whose return to this microphone is anxiously awaited and expected in the near future. To him, I am deeply grateful and highly honored for granting me this great privilege and opportunity once again to represent him and his message to you, his beloved people. Our subject is taken from the 17th chapter of Matthew, and it is titled, Elijah Must First Come. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of the coming of that last messenger or prophet of God who would usher in the kingdom of God and who would bring with him a message that would close out an old world order of things. And that great one whom the prophet predicted would come was a man whom the prophets called Elijah. Elijah is a great name. Or some of the scholars on that name say that Elijah means God is present with us. And how true that name is. For when Elijah appears, God will be present among us. For Elijah must first come according to the scriptures before God does his final work of judgment and destruction of the present world. Among the mass of the people who are religious believers of one kind or another, there is very little talk of Elijah, that great one who is to appear just before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The Christians admit that Elijah must first come according to the scriptures. However, their whole talk is of Jesus. The Jews admit that Elijah must first come. But now, where is this Elijah? How shall we know him? What kind of work will Elijah do? And why is it that the scribes have written of this one that he must first come? These are good questions that we must find the answer to. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the Old Testament is a book of prophecy and the New Testament is a book of the fulfillment of that which the prophets prophesied of in the Old Testament. The Old Testament closes in the book of Malachi, which means my messenger, prophesying of the coming of that last and that great prophet of God named Elijah. In these words, Behold, I will send you Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The Bible, the Old Testament of prophecy, closes prophesying the coming of Elijah. If the New Testament is the fulfillment of prophecy, then the New Testament should open telling us that Elijah is here. But the New Testament opens talking about the birth of Jesus from a virgin. Does this contradict the prophetic utterances of the Old Testament? Or is this Jesus of the New Testament and Elijah one and the same person. If the old prophet prophesied of 
prophesied that Elijah will come. And in the New Testament, it is written that the scribe had said that Elijah must first come. Then who is this Elijah and how does he compare with the Jesus of the New Testament? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has caused us to see and understand that the Elijah of the Old Testament and the Jesus of the New Testament are one and the same person. This Jesus is born from a virgin, and they call his birth miraculous. Now, my beloved black brothers and sisters, common sense will cause us to agree on truth that no woman who is a virgin can give birth to a son. No woman who has not known a man can give birth to a child. So Messenger Muhammad teaches us that the scripture writers use symbolic language to describe a great event that was to take place. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child. And this child was to be fathered according to Scripture by the Holy Ghost. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that this symbolic language hides some very beautiful meaning of Scripture. A virgin is a girl that has not known a man. Not having known a man, that girl has not been introduced to the essence of life which would stop that young girl on the road to producing life. Having not known a man, she cannot then produce life from herself. Messenger Muhammad says that this symbolism is to describe the condition of a people who have not known God, who have not had a relationship with God, who have not known the truth of God or self. Consequently, this people are compared to a virgin. This people, not having known God, not having known the truth from God or of God, cannot produce from themselves a leader who will take them by the hand and lead them into the land of freedom, justice, and equality. Therefore, the black man and woman of America are styled sexually, Messenger Muhammad teaches us, as a virgin. Elijah must first cut. The virgin must meet with the Holy Ghost according to Scripture. So many of you have gone absolutely insane over the Scripture of the Holy Ghost. Messenger Elijah Muhammad teaches us that this is symbolism. You know and I know that there is no such thing as a ghost. But according to the dictionary, a ghost means the apparition of something. You see the outline of it in the darkness, but you cannot make out what it is you're looking at. So it is called symbolically a ghost. But if the light were turned on, and you could see the outline of that in the darkness, which you thought was a ghost, you would see the reality of that which you saw in the darkness. So it is, my beloved black brothers and sisters, with the scriptural language of the Holy Ghost. Messenger Muhammad says it represents the Holy One, God Almighty Himself coming under the cover of darkness to visit among His people. He comes to seek and to save that which was lost. He loved His people according to what the prophets predicted of Him. And He promised from the mouth of His prophets 
that after his people had suffered in bondage, he would go after them. He would seek them. He would find them. He would deliver them from out of the hands of those who had oppressed them. And he would settle them in their own land among their own people. This prophetic utterance of the old prophet is fulfilled today. The Holy One, God Almighty Himself, Messenger Muhammad teaches us, has come. He is not to come. He has already come. But He came at a time, Messenger Muhammad says, when the world was in gross spiritual darkness, when the world was not paying attention to the prophet's predictions of God. Therefore it is written of him, Behold, I come as a thief in the night. I come without observation. Messenger Muhammad says to you and me that God Almighty, in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, visited among us for three and one half years. And in the time of his visitation among us, his purpose was to introduce the black man to introduce one from among us to himself, to introduce truth into the head of one from among us. And in that great darkness, as he left us, the black man would begin to produce from himself a born leader that would be called the Son of God, a messenger from the Holy One, one produced from a relationship with God Almighty Himself. This is beautiful if it is understood. But make no mistake about it, my beloved black brothers and sisters, no woman can have a baby without the agency of a man. Consequently, we must understand the symbolism under these great symbols of the Scripture. We must look into the wisdom hidden under such symbolism. And Messenger Elijah Muhammad is giving us the eyes to see. He is opening our eyes to the hidden meaning of the scripture. And a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son and his name shall be called Jesus. His name shall be called Jesus. Jesus Messenger Muhammad teaches us is a Greek name which means justice or one who comes with justice, a great justifier of God's presence among us. So this is true. The word Elijah means God is present. And if God comes and makes for us a messenger, then the name Jesus is rightly applied to that messenger, for that messenger's being raised from among a people who had no wisdom of God, no contact with God, no knowledge of the truth of God or self. When such one rises from among a people in that condition with the utmost knowledge of God and the utmost knowledge of the truth, then that man is the Jesus, for he justifies that God did come that God did intervene in the affairs of man, that God is present in the world. Therefore, God and Elijah, or Jesus and Elijah, are one and the same. In Elijah is the spirit and power of God. In Jesus is the justification of the presence of God and our justification for a belief in God. Elijah must first come. After this baby is born, the father who produces this child goes away. No one sees the father, but they just see this son grow. No one sees the God who produces the messenger. They just see the messenger, as it was in the days of Moses. They didn't see Jehovah. They saw the effect of Jehovah's presence in Israel. They saw a man rise up from among the slaves, a man with power to condemn Pharaoh for his...
his evil and his inordinacy, for his evil mistreatment of Israel. So it is today, in the last days, when that last messenger rises up from among the people, you don't see the God who raised him up, but you see a man in your midst speaking with power and authority, speaking wisdom that no man had ever uttered before. And in this man's person, in his word, in his way, in the effect of his work on his people, you can bear witness that God must truly have come, that this man now that is in the world, Elijah, he had to first come. Otherwise, the people could not have any standard to come to believe in. The people would have no justification for a belief in God. Elijah must first come. Look at the language of these words. Elijah must first come. The word must means to be bound or obliged to by an imperative requirement. It is imperative. It is an imperative requirement that Elijah comes first. It is so important that Elijah comes. For if Elijah does not come, then the kingdom of heaven cannot come. Then the judgment of the world cannot come. Everything is held up until the coming of Elijah. Elijah must first come. But what made it so important that Elijah must first come? It is written of Elijah that he must come because there was no way that was not crooked. Think of it. Elijah must first come because there was no way that was not crooked. Every path to God had been made crooked. There was no way for the people to reach God. And therefore there was no way for God to reach the people. Because God cannot claim a crooked people to be his own. Therefore someone must first come and straighten up the crooked way that man may walk in a straight path to his God. Elijah must first come, the scripture teaches, and restore all things. The black man of America, Messenger Elijah Muhammad teaches us, is that people from whom Elijah would be produced. The black man of America is a man deprived of all things that he once had. As it is written in the scripture, this is a people that have exchanged their glory for that which doth not profit them. The black man of America has exchanged his good name of God for a name that does not profit him. He has exchanged his language, his culture, his religion, his God for that which doth not profit him. The scripture says he has hewed him out a cistern that holds no water. A cistern is a jug or that which holds water. If the black man has taken up a pitcher that holds no water or has taken up a belief in a God that does not exist, has taken up a way of life of a strange enemy of his that doth not profit him. This is a pitiful condition for the black man to be in. He needs someone to restore his sight, for he has eyes but he cannot see. He needs someone to restore his hearing, to restore his speech. He needs someone to restore him to mental and spiritual life. He needs someone to restore him to freedom, to justice, to equality. Yes, the black man of America needs someone to restore him to the realm of humanity. He needs Elijah 
For if Elijah does not come, there will never be a restoration. There will be no salvation. There will be no kingdom of heaven. There can be no judgment and no separation until Elijah first comes. In the book of Thessalonians, the second Thessalonians, it is written that they shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This is to teach us that when Elijah comes, Elijah ushers in the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. For Elijah has that particular and peculiar revelation, the revelation of the man of sin, the man of sin that we have tried to integrate with, the man of sin that we have fallen in love with, the man of sin that we have actually worshipped the image of such man. When Elijah comes and gives us the truth of the man of sin, then there's a falling away for us. This is preparation for that great and dreadful day of the Lord. Elijah must first come. My beloved black brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you this afternoon that Elijah is here. And God is present in Elijah. And the spirit and the power of God is in Elijah and around Elijah, backing him up that he may prepare the way before the coming of God. He must make a straight path for God to come in. Think of it. There was no way that was not crooked. Who is it that has made every way to God crooked? It is that man of sin, that son of perdition. We can look among the religious believers of the world and the religion that they practice today is so far from the teachings of their prophets until we can hardly find a trace of the true essence of the prophets' teachings among those who claim to follow such prophets. The way of Islam has been made crooked. The way of Christianity has been made crooked. The way of Judaism has been made crooked. Every prophet of God that has come into the world, their revelation has been made crooked with the exception of Prophet Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. But the people who say they believe in such man are far removed from him. We are warned in the Holy Quran to let Israel serve as a lesson for us. For Israel wants to be the choice of Almighty God in this past 6,000 years. She was to be a light. She was to lead the people in the way of God. But she held God's name in perverse and crooked ways. Therefore, even though she was destined to be a great nation, that God had to punish her for her perverse and crooked way. It is written in the New Testament that the followers of Elijah, who would be like a bright light in the midst of a spiritually darkened world, would be reformed out of a crooked and perverse nation. Who can deny the fact that America is a crooked and perverse nation. Everything in America with God's name on it is crooked. The church is crooked. The schools are crooked. The judicial system is crooked. The politics is crooked. Everything in America is crooked. And the black man of America, having been reared by a crooked deceiver, has become crooked. This is what makes it absolutely necessary for Elijah to first come. He must make that crooked thing straight. As it is written in the book of Isaiah, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The wilderness 
Messenger Muhammad teaches is America. For the people in America live a wild, untamed, and rebellious life against the divine laws of God. Being a wilderness, it is also a desert because it is dry spiritually of the truth and the true knowledge of God. And in this wilderness and in this desert, here the black man of America has been made crooked. But the scripture says that every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough place is plain. This is a clear prophecy that the black man who has been made crooked by our sojourn in America with a crooked nation, the white race, with a crooked serpent-like people that God's sending to us Elijah, who will take us out of the crooked path and straighten up our hearts, straighten up our minds with truth, straighten out our lives from the crooked way that we have lived. That man Elijah would bring us back to God by straightening up the path for God to claim us as his own people. My beloved black brothers and sisters, Elijah must first come. And you, in order to come to God, must first come to Elijah. You, my beloved black brother and sister, must recognize that our life is crooked. Our way of thinking is crooked. Our way of acting is perverse. And if you want to be successful today, you must first come to Elijah as Elijah must first come before God comes. Now you must first come unto Elijah and let Elijah straighten out your lives as he has straightened out hundreds of thousands of our lives who have come to bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his last messenger. Elijah must first come and indeed we declare to you that Elijah is here. Thank you for listening. And may Allah grant you the light of understanding as I greet you in peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Minister Farrakhan. You have been listening to the national broadcast of Mr. Muhammad Speaks. The principal speaker is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Messenger of Allah, leader and teacher to the so-called American Negro. Speaking to you on behalf of Messenger Muhammad has been Minister Louis Farrakhan, of Muhammad's Temple, number seven, New York City, whose subject has been, Elijah must first come. Mr. Muhammad's life-giving, life-saving words are now available to you in two great books, entitled Message to the Black Man in America and How to Eat to Live, and the long playing record album entitled The Judgment of the World is Now. You get both books for only $5.50 and the record album for only $3.50 by sending a certified check or money order to Muhammad's Temple No. 2, 7351 South Stony Island Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60649. That's Muhammad's Temple No. 2, 7351 South Stony Island Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60649. Mr. Muhammad's life-giving words can also be read each week in Muhammad Speaks newspaper, available at your newsstands and through your Muhammad Speaks representative for only 25 cents. Muhammad Speaks, the newspaper that speaks to the black man and for the black man. And you are cordially invited to visit Muhammad's Temple of Islam every Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday and Friday evening at 8 p.m. The statements you have just heard on the preceding program are not those of this station nor the station's policy, but reflect the views of the participants. Until